like I know he gets a lot of negative publicity for some of the things he might say, but I, I, I can't stress how good he was at his time. I couldn't. I'm lucky enough. I have met a couple of people, maybe not to his degree, who'd be, who'd be quite well known, maybe in the golf circles, and like he's. He's as good, if not better, than any one of them. Like the amount of time he spent with me, it was. But he loved it. It was like the more questions I asked, the more he wanted to answer more. So it was. Uh, it was brilliant. I still have notes written at home about the stuff he's telling me. Ronan Mullarney, I haven't seen you in a few days now. Uh, yeah. We are back at the scene of the crime, back at Lockern. Although, it's uh, it's business time now. We're here at the Euro Pro Tour Championships. It's Pro Am Day. How are you? All good. All good, Johnny. Yeah, I've missed you. It's been four days. Oh God, what have you what have you done without me for the last few know. days? I don't know. I don't know. Tough few days. Um. So yes, obviously it is the Euro Pro Tour Championships. Top sixty in the order of merit are competing. Mm-hmm. They're battling it out, as we know from from anyone that watched the video for five Challenge Tour spots. You mentioned in the video that this is kind of you know winner bust for you. Mm-hmm. Um. How are you feeling going into this week? Um. Yeah. Very good. Um. I had last week off, which I kind of like because there was a good bit of golf before that, kind of week on week. So I um, got a bit of practice done. I came up here and played with yourself that day. So, yeah, look forward to it. Should be good. So you said that, um, you said to me before that you're, we'll say, golf obsessed, that you're always kind of working on it. That's fair, yeah. So when you're when you're on a week off, what, is, what does that look like for you? Because you said, you, you said that to me you still <laughs> be doing the golf bits. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, when I say week off, I mean non-competitive week. So this is like the very few weeks off, as such. Um, well, I'm lucky enough. Um, I mentioned you before. Dad's dad's a pro, and uh, we have a place um, at our house. So we have a golf simulator, and that's where dad gives lessons. So when he's not giving lessons, I'm uh, I'm free to beat balls in there, and then I play my golf in Galway Galway Golf Club when I'm home. So it's a fairly busy golf course. So you have to pick and choose the times, but they have a really good short game area as well. So. Really, I would set out a plan at the start of the week, and then depending on how my game is, I would tailor that plan to suit day on day. So, obviously, for fairly simple stuff like always keep my wedge play fairly sharp because that would be a that would be um, one, yeah one of the strong points of my game. I struggled a little bit with my putting uh, previous to the last couple of weeks, so I've done a good bit of work on there on on that part of my game, which I feel is which is uh, coming along nicely. And um, yeah, other than that, just tinkering constantly so you mentioned there that your 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 dad is he's a, how you got into golf yeah um what what age were you what's your first memory of of, of swinging a golf club um it's a good question uh, da, 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 da. swinging a golf club would have been fairly young so say like i don't know four or five but by the time i actually would start playing even something close to golf would be probably closer to 10 i would say 10 11 or 12 i know go away at the time um, was fairly strict that you couldn't really be on the course before the age of say do, 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 like twelve ish, so that's changed now. But um, so I would I would like sneak out with that. I put a couple of clubs in his bag and play the loop of the first four uh, late in the evening. But um, yeah, I would say properly probably around ten. So you got got into golf at a young age, and when did that bug kind of bite you? Because you 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 you're a big snooker fan as well, so. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, no. At the, that's, at that's the time, the I went yeah. to the golf club. Yeah, I remember <laughs> saying that. Yeah, um, yeah. At the start, that yeah, I used to, I used to really want to play a game of snooker in the snooker table in the golf club. So dad would, dad would bring me up. He'd want to play golf, so we'd play nine holes or whatever. You'd kind of run through that, so I could just go in and play a little bit of snooker. But <laughs> that lasted, I'd say, all of about maybe three months. Okay. Um. But uh, no. So yeah, I remember actually quite cre- clearly. It was like I think I was about twelve. Okay. When um. Yeah, I suppose that golf bug bit me, and then it became a bit of, like you said, an obsession since then. So, th- so then talk me through like the progression. Then, as an as an amateur golfer, you like, you've got a very successful amateur career behind you. Mm, um, yeah. So it, it was it was pretty it was pretty consistent in in boys golf. What I mean by consistent is year upon year, I got slightly better. Um, I never had these massive jumps. I never came out one year and and was significantly better than the next. As I started to get, as I started to get lower, so at the start there would have been big jumps, but it's it's obviously easier to take big jumps then. But um, yeah, I just remember, I I always remember it was just a lot of 
work involved and it never felt like work it still doesn't really feel like work but there's a lot of hours put in um like nothing ever nothing ever i found anyway clicked without like a lot of work it had to become second nature yeah i don't know i've always had a problem with that word natural i don't really feel very few things are natural i think there's a reason for everything now people might call that natural but um like I don't believe too many people are born to play golf. No matter even no matter how good Rory McIlroy looks when he hits a ball. Sure, yeah. You know he spent a lot of time kind of cultivating that. So um, no, I definitely wouldn't say anything I did came to me. I I went to it more than <laughs> it came to me. Um, but I I think as well though that the the harder it is to get something, the harder it is to lose. Sure. So. The more it's kind of ingrained, the harder it is to kind of fade away. Okay. Type of way. So Fair. I'm, I'm okay that there's there's work involved. Looking ahead to to this week in the Euro Pro, we'll mm. get on to um, the the Open in a moment. But mm-hmm. how has the Euro Pro tour been for you? Um, it's definitely been an adjustment. It's been a bigger adjustment than I thought it would be. I don't think it's necessarily professional golf. I think it's more from what we played as amateurs to now what we played as pros, it's it's different. It's, um, how do I put it? It's um, one shot as an amateur, say, it might be, depending on where you are in the field, it might be like um, two, three spots. <laughs> A pro it could be 12 shots. You see how, how like concentrated the leaderboards are. It's, it is mad, like, 150 or 160 people in the field and if you make the cut within reason you're not a million miles off leading unless someone's on, running away with it so sure. it is really concentrated um, I really have struggled with my putting especially my first year I played first full year in the Euro Pro and that's like like none of the courses are that hard I'd say like 80% of it can be putting sometimes so if you're not putting well I've, I really did struggle um how do you get through that yeah it's it, like it's a good question I, I i trust me it's not for lack of effort my god um like you kind of be you be stuck between two stools you like i would have a very felt like I had a very good understanding of what i used to do and how it did work for me and kind of the mechanisms i, I went about or used but I don't know, like it's it's the smallest little vagrancies. And then sometimes you can feel like you start the ball online with a decent pace, but you're not reading it right. So that's like that's a different set of skills you need there. So it's like it's constant trial and error and it's a lot of bloody putts. Like <laughs> and, and sometimes it's not like I said there, like a lot of putts, and it is a lot of putts, but I would say it's more thinking. It's like, well, well what's the problem and then what's the best way to go about it? Because it's very easy to say, right, the problem is start direction I'm hitting it left I'm hitting it right whatever but what's the best way to fix that like you could put a stroke on it that you're never going to miss it left but you're missing it right is as bad as missing it left so you have to go you have to try and go about things the best way possible so um yeah a lot of time thinking um am I out of it I don't know if I'll ever be out of it but uh, I'd like to think it's in a better place now um obviously learn a lot through going through spells like that so um, I'd like to think I'm the better for it now. What do you learn? Don't miss the left. No, um, I probably learned that I didn't, I didn't realize how important certain aspects are. I remember when we were sitting, we were out there putting. This sounds unbelievably basic, but how important uh, pace control is. Yeah, it's unbelievable. We were, we were sharing stories there about Jordan Speed, different stories we heard, but like it is no, it's not like magical how he holds so many 20 footers it's incredible his pace control so the decision to go at the open so go through qualifying yeah and then as you get through qualifying and you get into the open mm. what's the thinking as to just being like, oh, i'm gonna go for qualifying here um, is it a case of you your game was in a good place or or was it just the the fact that by the very nature of it being an open, anyone can enter and anyone can win. And you're yeah. like, well, why not me? Yeah, absolutely. The second one, I would say. I don't think, because you have to enter so far in advance, it's not a case of, oh, I'm playing well at the time. And 
excuse me, there's lots of Euro Pro going on at, the, at that time as well. So although I actually did play the event after the final stage, qual- the Euro Pro event after the final stage qualifying, it's the very next day, I, I definitely shouldn't have. And you're kind of forfeiting that event because um, it's 36 holes the day before and then you have to travel from wherever you are to the event. So there's a lot of, a lot of to and go, to and fro. But um, no, definitely, I think it's like, it's, it's a massive chance. Um, and again, it, like it is your job. So you want to give yourself as many chances to progress as possible. So definitely. How was stage one? Stage one was good. Yeah. Um, played fairly decent. It was actually where the challenge tour was last year in Frilford. Great call, of course. Greens were incredible there, actually. Some of the best we played on. Um, and funny enough, the week before, my driver had cracked. So I had to try and find a driver. And they're actually very good in the pro shop there. They gave me they gave me the loan of a driver. Um, so actually, I owe them. <laughs> good people there. Um, so yeah, I was, I was three under in first stage. And again, I can't fully remember, but I think I was, I was like, tied first maybe there was three of us or something so yeah that was a pretty good round there um and then final stage was princes and when you're signing up for open qualifying you put down your where you'd like to go first stage and if you qualify where you'd like to go second stage and it's just preferences they can't always give it to you but when i looked at the final stage qualifying i only played princes and i thought well that's going to be an advantage and i played the open there i think or sorry the british amateur yeah I think it was 2017 or 2016, 18, something around then. So it's familiar, well, to a is, degree. This is what I thought. I went there and <laughs> I was like, this golf course is completely different. It was, I'd say they've added 400 yards to it. I found out walking around the practice room, they had added 400 yards to it. It's a completely different golf course. But um, yeah, even the area, like I was familiar with the town and stuff like that, because when you go over to the amateur, you're there for, even if it doesn't go to plan, you're there for at least five days. So um, yeah, just, you know, somewhere familiar, you know, where where you're going, where you're not going. And so that obviously went well as well. Yeah, that went well. That was, that was really like, even when I showed up that morning, it was just like amateur golf again. It was, it was windy. It was cold. We were off the pack tees. The pins were off, hanging off the sides of edges. I thought, uh, I thought Mark Rayleigh had set it off. (laughs) The GUI here in Golf Ireland. But, uh, no, that was like, that was, uh, that was like a, it was it was a it was a really good test because like I was saying in the Euro Pro, pretty much every week it's at least double figures. It's at least ten or unders went in for three rounds, and when you got there, like you could play eight rounds there. I don't think ten under was going to win, like so it was tough. But um, and so you know obviously where I'm going with this, and so the in the lead up to the Open Championship, you did you did your practice at Dunbeg as mm-hmm. well. That was that a case of. You were saying that I, I, uh, a friend of yours is a member there and kind of helped put that in place yeah, for you? Yeah, so Dave Scully, another shout out, good man Dave. Dave used to be a member in Galway and a uh, very good player. Dave was off scratch, good enough, plus figures. Um, but since he's moved down there, his wife's from that area, so he's moved down there. He now lives down there full time. And he's a member down there. And I was, I had a, after the day I, I came home after qualifying or after the Euro Pro event, I had a breakfast with one of the lads um, who's the assistant in Bob Ring and he would, be, he would be a better friend with Dave than I was but I just said to Adon, my friend, I was like, I think I'm going to go down there. That's, that's where I want to practice. And he goes, oh, I'll say it to Dave. I was like, okay, brilliant, yeah. He said it to Dave. There's no word of a lie. Five minutes later, we were sitting at the table, he rang me. He goes, Ronan, Adon said you want to practice down there. I was like, well, if that's possible, he goes, I'll sort that. I'll be back to you in 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, he rings me back and he goes, it's sorted. Um, yeah, so it was, it was it was brilliant, brilliant. And so, how long were you there for in total? So I went down there on a Wednesday, and I came back Friday evening. So just the three days, three days. And so when you were there, obviously you weren't the only person preparing for the Open Championship. <laughs> no, no. Um, Bryson DeChambeau was also there. Mm. You got to spend a good bit of time with him. Yeah. He ended up actually what, flying you and your family over. Yeah, well, it, it turned out to be just me, but he had asked. He was like, do your mom and your dad need a lift? But they were they did, they did couldn't get accommodation for that early, so they weren't over till a little bit later. So they missed out, like, but yeah, he offered. So what's Bryson like? I think he's been making a lot of headlines recently because yeah. of the lift stuff, but yeah. Um, what like what's that experience like where a just getting to spend a bit of time because you got to spend quite a lot of time with him it turns out like pretty much for wednesday to friday 
as much time as I wanted to. Because at, at the start, when Brian introduced us, um, he explained the situation. And I had heard about kind of a bit of an obsessive worker. So I thought this, this might be the only time I see him. But as it turned out, he introduced me to him and he was there with his caddy and his manager and his caddy and his manager went off to play to have a look at the golf course. And he was hitting balls and he took a phone call and he was gone for about 20 minutes and he came back and he came over to me and he started talking with me and I thought, well, better get the questions ready, I thought. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, like, I know he gets a lot of negative publicity for some of the things he might say, but I... I I can't stress how good he was at his time. I couldn't. I'm lucky enough. I have met a couple of people, maybe not to his degree, who'd be, who'd be quite well known, maybe in the golf circles. And like he's, he's as good, if not better, than any one of them. Like the amount of time he spent with me it was, and I had endless numbers of questions. Anyone who knows me knows that, like, if they have any sort of specialties in in, in any area, I'll have plenty of questions for them. It could be about anything, and especially when it was to do with golf and how he grew up with the golf machine that dad studied. Like, I just had so many bloody questions. So, uh, but he loved it. It was like the more questions I asked, the more he wanted to answer more. So it was, uh, it was brilliant. I still have notes written at home about the stuff he's telling me. What do you learn from kind of spending time and practicing with Bryson? Did you play the course as well together? Or was it no, all just he, actually, he plays very little golf and he said that. He said that at the very start. He goes, I don't really play much golf. Um, and yeah, he really doesn't play much golf. Um, but, I learned that my god is he obsessive it's it's like it's like when you start talking about golf like it's, it's like his face lights up like he gets so into it and even the stuff with the gym like seven days a week there's no there's no days off there's no days oh I'm sore there's no recovery days I, I don't know much about the gym I don't know if that's the right way or the wrong way but it seems to be working for him it's uh, it is 24-7 and um, in relation to what I learned off him, I could go through the phone there. I have a couple of lists of what I learned off him. But um, I would say the main thing is is that, I suppose it's kind of similar to what I am, is like take very little as fact until you can go and prove it yourself. So it was very much Johnny, bad example, Billy might say X. Just because Billy's known as the best instructor around, you, like I would, I would test it before I take it as as gospel. Okay. Um, which I thought was a great way to be. Now you might turn into some someone who's quite cynical, but um, at least if you can if you can prove it to yourself, it's probably easier to trust it then anyway. One thing that was quite clear with him, he's obviously, you know, outrageously wealthy now through what he's done with golf. Um, but I know, and I knew beforehand, he didn't come from a wealthy family at all, and it's really clear to see. Although he's flying in private jets, and although he's you know, he could he can go out and I'm sure buy whatever car or house he wants. He remembers what it's like to not be to not have all those luxuries. Sure. Which is like that I think that's a really it's a really good quality. Um and that's obviously like when he brought up the jet to me about do you want it lift over in the jet, that like that's really easy to see. He there was no need to do that. There was no there was no pressure put on or, or anything to do that. So So leak of itself, actually you've got a great tiger story. From the well, yeah, I, I mean, don't know. You're, you're I tried to stay out of it, like, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, so the the players' catering area at the Open is like a it's a massive marquee. I don't know how many thousand square feet. It's huge, but it's like two tiers, and the stairs you walk up, you kind of you walk up, and then you walk kind of back up. So it, it twists the stairs. Sure. So when you take your first step, you can't see the last step. So. It was only when I turned the corner and I look up, like Tiger was like, I don't know, eight or 10 steps in front of me. And like I was saying, it's a massive area upstairs, like 10, 15, 20,000 square feet. I don't know. And all the players or relatives of the players or coaches or caddies, whoever, were up there eating. So when I go up there, um, I could see Tiger was just in front of me. So anyway, I walked up. But when I walked up, like I, I'd say he doesn't realize, but everybody stopped eating and stared and like i was caught in the gaze because i'm right behind him so it was really awkward so i i kind of stepped to the side <laughs> as tiger walked up but yeah like he doesn't even he doesn't even like he doesn't even blink it's just normal he was going over i don't know who he was talking to harold Warner or something and i just wanted to kind of get out of the way <laughs> as tiger walked up but uh 
yeah like i remember a couple of the guys were saying to me like you'll have to go up and talk to him but it's kind of how do you do that yeah how do you how do you go hi, hi. tiger how's it going yeah ronan yeah yeah do you know me it's yeah the crack yeah um yeah no i like if i got a chance to talk to him i would like if there was ever an opportunity that he was sitting by himself but sure it's not gonna happen like i i would have no problem going up to talk to him but he's always with people he'll never be by himself because people are going to go up to talk to him so like as much as it'd be nice to go up to say hi i mean it's not i don't think he'll, he'll remember me so i don't think it's going to be i don't think it's going to be anything worth doing and I, you don't want to annoy him either so you want to stay out of his way and it's kind of like you you can understand why you'd want to stay out of his way he's just he's just mobbed by people like like rory's obviously a massive star and Rory is a massive star, but it's just not comparable to Tiger. It's freakish. It's he doesn't live a normal life. I don't think anyone realized. I knew, I had a feeling that it's going to be you know somewhat crazy with Tiger there, but I couldn't get over it. It's like it's Tiger, and then the world of golf. <laughs>